welcome to another episode of steamy gram sessions today we are talking about something that is very close to i think everybody's heart most of us walk around like this i know i do i walk around like this a lot i've learned how to cross the street looking down like this and what am i doing i'm on my phone i'm on my phone like everybody else is but how dangerous are these little gadgets huh so we got to find out so we brought in an expert obviously so Magnus van Veek from alpha wave will be joining us hi thank you so much for taking the time to join us today thanks for the invitation yeah we're so excited to have you so Magnus you're going to get straight into it But before we do, I just want you to tell us a little bit more about Alpha Wave because you work for Alpha Wave, yes? So, what yes. is Alpha Wave? What do they do? And what makes you an expert in our topic today? Okay. Um so I'm from a group called Alpha Wave. Um we have various different divisions that specializes in uh, specific markets. Um the, the some of the divisions that I'm involved with specialize in electromagnetic safety. So we go out to base stations and we make sure that they are built correctly and we sell products and software in that market to uh, companies like like ourselves internationally. So we have a dissimeter that the people that works on the mast use to make sure that they that they work safely and various other things. So that's some of our experience in that in that field and then we have completely other divisions that does work on the SKA and various other um unrelated topics to the specific one. Oh, okay, perfect. So that makes you an expert in this. All right. So firstly, let's just go straight into this so that it's a, you know, it's a quick chat. Um what change will 5G bring to how the smartphone functions if they will bring any change? Okay. So with every with every newer generation as we've moved forward in South Africa from 2G, 3G to 4G, mostly what you see is a better better data throughput so higher download speeds and uh, depending on the technology lower latencies as well so what 5G will bring as well is higher download speeds so it's quite a big piece of the spectrum that becomes available that will make give the networks a uh, 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 bigger pipe that they can send data through to your device to your cell phone so download should be quicker um and then some other minor technical differences as well one of the things you might have read on the safety aspect is the millimeter waves yeah that's not currently used in south africa for 5g we use a different frequency range for 5g but 5g will be like 4g but faster for for the average user okay so you mentioned that in south africa we're not using the milli waves right that is something that yeah. is used in other countries why specifically are we not using it in south africa and why is it a good thing maybe that we're not using it in south africa okay um so the millimeter waves is a very high frequency they generally don't propagate that well into a building or anything like that so what happens i would say america does it maybe slightly the other way around compared to the rest of the world if you generalize it so in in the uk for example the 5g rollout is also predominantly at 3 1/2 gigahertz similar to what south africa's will be in america that um some of the vendors some of the um network operators use a very a higher frequency as well that generally doesn't propagate as well into buildings um as the lower frequencies do all right and in terms of safety in terms of safety it doesn't really make a big difference i would say there are guidelines whichever technology whichever frequency you use that must be adhered to So whether it's 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, whether it's millimeter wave or not, it doesn't really make a big difference. Um television, radio, all those systems, Wi-Fi, they must be they must adhere to those guidelines. Your cell phone, um, every every device working working uh, em- emitting signals intentionally. Okay. And then you mentioned something about Wi-Fi. So most of our yes. phones use Wi-Fi, Bluetooth or just a normal signal. Is there any difference in terms yes. of the dangers with that or the radiation that it emits okay um so maybe i can just uh, backtrack a little bit and then try to give you an answer after that so um whether whether it's a cell phone or a wifi router or bluetooth or a, a cell phone talking to the cell phone network there are guidelines that set the threshold that you may be exposed to as a human 
So when, uh, when, before a cell phone uh, may be sold, it must be tested to make sure that that specific device also complies with those guidelines and similar for a Wi-Fi router or whatever, whatever other device there is. Um, so as long as you're compliant with those guidelines, which are regularly reviewed, the international consensus is that you don't have to worry about the EMF safety. The guidelines are there to protect you. Okay. So when you buy a Wi-Fi router, that device, depending on the transmit power, will be tested. Bluetooth is generally for short range communication. So very short range. So that's a very low power level, um, especially with Bluetooth BTLE, Bluetooth low energy. Wi-Fi is slightly longer range, but you know that your Wi-Fi, your Wi-Fi router at home might only work one hour away or something. It won't have, it won't work four kilometers. A cell phone has a, has a bigger range and hence a higher transmit power as well, but the cell phone and the network limits that power to the minimum required for a, for a proper signal. And even under the full power scenario, that device is still tested to be compliant with those guidelines. So the, the limits are sufficient to protect you against the negative health effects, and then the device is tested under the scenario where it will transmit that maximum power. Mm -hmm. So uh, from a safety point of view, any of those devices um, should be tested and generally are tested again, uh, against those guidelines, and then I don't have any um, health concerns as long as, they, as long as they meet those criteria. Okay, so I'm guilty of something. When I sleep, my cell phone is under my pillow all through okay. the night, which obviously is dangerous because yes. I just um, snooze quicker since it's under my pillow. But what are the safety concerns in terms of that, in terms of okay. radiation? Are there any? Okay, so your, your cell phone is designed to be used against your head in that mode or with a hands-free kit or something like that, and it's tested for that scenario. So you can hold your cell phone against your head, and you can do that continuously, and you'll still be compliant with the, with the limits. When you, when you are sleeping, your cell phone will, or when your cell phone is not in use, not only when you are not sleeping, your cell phone will only transmit every now and then for the, to tell the network that it is still active, or then if you're uploading or downloading something. So your cell phone might download or upload some information during the night, maybe a video that you shared earlier that hasn't gone through yet or something like that, or it might download a WhatsApp image or whatever the case may be, but it generally won't transmit a lot in the, during the night. So Good. it will be on standby the majority of the time, so no health concerns. Sorry, Amanda? So what if I'm listening to music maybe? Because you're saying that there's no health okay. concerns when it's, on sleep yeah. mode in a sense when it's just doing it's, very minor tasks but what if i'm maybe it, listening to music the whole night or watching a video okay. or yeah. something okay so even even then there's no health concern so i'm not concerned about using the device as long as it complies with those guidelines if you if you are not using it it goes into standby and then it transmits even less energy so let's say you're listening to music that you have downloaded on a memory card in your comp in your phone then it will not communicate to the network let's say you're streaming streaming some audio from some streaming or youtube service or something like that then the predominantly that will be predominantly a downloading signal so your device will transmit the signal every now and then but not continuously if your phone is transmit if you're uploading something then your phone is in a, in a higher transmit mode, um, and then, um, then it can transmit energy during that time, but it's tested even for that scenario. So you can sleep with it under your pillow if you want to. I, I put it on silent and other things not to disturb my sleep, not because I'm worried mm -hmm. about the EMF safety aspect of it. So it's right oh, next so to me on my, on my cupboard, but I, I put it on, on silent, not on airplane mode or something, on silent so that I don't get woke, woken up by... A, yeah. by a WhatsApp message or a SMS or something unnecessarily. Okay, is it under your pillow though? No, it's right, ne it's right next to my bed, not under my pillow. Okay. I'm, but... I'm a rough sleeper, it might fall, it might fall from my bed if I <laughs> put it under my pillow. <laughs> okay, so that doesn't matter. Okay, so that's good, that's yeah. good. And then is there a difference between um, earphones, I see you have earphones in right now, and yes. earphones, for example, which only connect via Bluetooth? Is there a difference in yeah. how those operate? And is there any safety concerns with that? Um, so there you'll see on the internet, there has been some theoretic cases of poor quality headsets that theoretically cause problems. I'm not aware of any proper headset or hands-free, whether it's, whether it's a cable one like the one I'm using or a, or a Bluetooth one. 
that has any health concerns. So what you're doing by moving the phone away from your body, you are reducing your exposure from the handset itself. So if your handset is the main source of transmission linking to the base station, then you are mo if you move that further away from yourself, then you reduce your exposure from there. Um, if you use a cable hands-free, then the audio comes in with the audio cable from the phone. If you use a Bluetooth one, then it transmits a little bit of energy from, you, from the earpiece back to the phone, but that's very low energy. So either of those are ways to reduce your exposure um, should you wish to do so. What exposure are you referring to? Oh, so it's the electromagnetic signals that uh, absorb by your body. So your, your cell phone, when it, when it, when it downloads, it doesn't necessarily transmit, but when you upload information or every now and then your phone trans sends a transmission signal, and that is a source of electromagnetic signals that your body is exposed to. And we call that the EMF exposure. And is this EMF exposure dangerous? As, as long as you comply with those guidelines, like the ICNAP ones that are relevant, every, every proper device is tested. And you can go and look at the SAR value. So every device must be, must be tested and every base station must be checked against those limits. And as long as those are complied with, then I would say no. Okay. Your answers yeah. are very diplomatic. So I'm just like, I okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like yes, I'm sure. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I talk on my, so knowing everything that I know, I talk on my cell phone extensively. I use it quite a lot, quite many, many hours of the day. Um, I sleep with it next to my pillow, not under my pillow. Um, and not, not because I'm scared of it, under my pillow. And um, I think the, the one thing, there's, there is some science out there that says that you must limit your uh, exposure to these devices, electronic equipment before sleep time because, it, uh, because of the way that could affect your sleep. Not because of the EMF safety, but you, it's a way to keep your brain simulated, like watching television, something exciting, and then trying to go to sleep also doesn't work very well, not because there's an electromagnetic safety issue. Okay, so you've said a lot about how it is basically safe to use our cell phones, but is there yes. anything or any precautions that we need to take just to stay safe in some way, if there are any yeah. health effects. Because, I mean, I have seen on the internet, there's been some cases where they say people have developed cancer, um, yeah. either brain cancer or breast cancer. Because I know, yes. like, b back then, women used to take their phone and, like, keep it in their breasts. And then yes. they'll actually develop cancer in the shape of the phone. Yeah. Um, so okay. that is why I'm just wondering if there is anything yeah. we can do to protect ourselves. But you keep saying it's safe, so... Yeah. So there's a lot of cancer is one of the specific endpoints is the word that the scientists use that they study um, relating to, to safety from especially cell phones. Because you have this device that you could be using next to your, next to your head for extensive periods. And there are countries with very good cancer incidence registers. Um, the Nordic countries, Sweden, those, those countries have very good um, cancer registers. And th those countries and others across the world track the incidence rates of brain cancers, as an example. And mm -hmm. since the introduction of cell phones, they have not seen a significant change to the incidence of, of the specific brain cancers that are of interest. So looking at the cancer incidence rates, there's no scientific evidence to say that the cancer rate is going up since cell phones was introduced because you have this device next to your head. So taking all those things into account, the um, medical bodies like Public Health England and various others, ICNAP, for example, they review all the latest research and based on that, they set limits. And then every device manufacturer or network operator must make sure that they comply with those limits and then it's deemed to be safe. That's the basic, um, the basic mm -hmm. way it's done. Okay. okay. So, so, so on the brain cancer or breast cancer, um, the scientific the conclusion there is that looking at what we know now, there's no there's no proof that it causes an increased risk of cancer um, if you use it, if you, um, as long as the device obviously complies with those limits. Okay. okay, so it's basically safe. Yes. Okay, so have you come across any questions that people have asked you, the certain things that, or certain questions you get asked that you'd want us to know in terms of safety with cell phones? Anything people ask okay. you in general? Okay. Um, with your previous question, maybe I can just tie on to that one. You asked also what you, what you should do or what you can do. There's nothing you have to do 
to comply with those limits. If you use the device as without opening it and trying to fiddle around with the electronics on the inside, it's designed to operate in compliance with those limits if it's a proper, if it's a proper handset. If you are concerned about your exposure, one of the things you can do is to move the device further away from your body by using a hands-free kit um, or then reduce your talk time on, on the device. Those are some, some of the things that you can do. One of the definite negative health risks of, of using this equipment is people causing driving accidents because people don't pay attention to the road while driving or walking across the street, as you mentioned in the beginning, um, while, <laughs> while texting or something like that. So be careful. Always, always obviously pay uh, attention to your surroundings, especially if you, if you are driving because people get distracted when using these devices and, and texting. Um, some of the most recent questions has been mainly on 5G and then this whole coronavirus fear that 5G caused, uh, causes coronavirus, which is, which is absolutely unfounded scientific um, nonsense that was, uh, Mr. Trump would call it fake news or something like that. Um, so that's probably the, the question we've had most recently, um, which is completely unfounded. Okay, okay, that's quite helpful. So, to conclude, is this yes. a smartphone or a smart killer? My answer would be smartphone, definitely. <laughs> it's, a, it's a device that enables so many things that we take for granted in our daily way of life nowadays, um, from communicating to getting information to banking to keeping in contact with friends and... Um, there are limits to ensure the EMF safety aspect of it. So apart from driving with it and not paying too attention while you're driving to the road, that would be, I would say, these devices are definitely safe to use. Okay. It seems like everybody's happy with all the information that you shared, and I'm really happy about it. Thank you so, so much again for giving us your time to talk about this. Now we do know for a fact that our smartphones are safe, irregardless of how we use them except if we use them when we're driving or walking because i mean i've seen some people <laughs> bumping into things because they're on their phone while walking you know yeah. so it's also just yes. as dangerous so yeah thank you so yeah. much madness this was really helpful and really lovely we appreciate your time thank you Th thanks for the invitation amanda it's a pleasure enjoy your day bye bye everyone <laughs>